That was a really humiliating experience. This is ridiculous. It's anxiety provoking. It's the system that's broken. Deborah, Nicole, Marcos represent the stories of millions of people in the United States with disabilities. Every day, they face a number of hardships living in a highly ableist society. But the pain points they all shared are the difficulty they face trying to access or maintain assistance they rightfully qualify for, more commonly defined as administrative burdens. All of the systems are set up to really dehumanize disabled people and not to help us. Many disabled Americans qualify for and depend on assistance programs to live. While the United States offers a wide variety of government assistance programs, these safety net programs are laden with unnecessary and harmful administrative burdens, including complicated paperwork and complex and confusing application processes. Borders on harassment, actually, after a point, because, you know, they try to scare you into, like, signing things that you may not understand for fear of, like, taking away your benefits and things like that. And it's almost like an intimidation kind of thing. Many disabled Americans apply for Supplemental Security Income, SSI, or Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI. The average processing time for the first three stages of the application process out of five is nearly two years. Every year, 8,000 applicants had to declare bankruptcy while waiting for their application to be approved. I still just feel like the process of getting and keeping these benefits, it's been humiliating. It has just been ridiculous. Even worse, nearly 11,000 applicants die before their application is approved. Another burden is asset tests, which create huge paperwork burdens and make it nearly impossible for SSI recipients to accrue real wealth. In 2019, the median net worth for SSI recipient households was $3,025, compared to $118,200 for all households. Back in 2018 to 2019, when I was did my Star Trek Fellowship at NDRN, National Disability Rights Network, I ended up getting kicked off SSDI because they ended up counting the fellowship as, you know, work earnings. And it took me about eight months or so to get reinstated, which is very traumatizing. It's triggering. I couldn't afford like any of my bills, like my rent, my my phone bill, my electricity, or nothing. Because on SSI, you're not allowed to have more than the 2,000 right now. These lengthy and invasive application processes often cause increased stress, anxiety, and exacerbate pre-existing health conditions. The fear of being a contributing member of society is overshadowed by the fear of dying or suffering. Some SSDI applicants are asked to provide over a thousand pages of medical records and many have to hire a lawyer to apply or appeal the convoluted process. Even the fact that like I needed a lawyer to me it, it took me a long time to wrap my head around because what other federal benefits do people receive that you need to hire a lawyer for? Sadly only one in three applicants is ultimately approved. The majority of applicants suffer through undue duress for absolutely nothing. Right, it's a choice for this program. It's not a simple thing where like, there's just a clear booklet of like, you know, here's what you do. While there is no single solution to fix all administrative burdens, there are some broad ideas that can help the process of applying for safety net programs, such as improving data sharing and automation when determining eligibility and adopting a no wrong door policy that automatically directs applicants from one program to all the others that they may qualify for. Additionally, there needs to be a cultural shift among policymakers 
to prioritize lifting the burdens off applicants' backs and placing them on the state. Administrative burdens make it difficult and sometimes nearly impossible for disabled Americans to access basic and vital necessities. Eliminating excessive burdens is a step towards a more equitable America.